What's up y'all and welcome to the channel. Are you considering diving into the world of deep space astrophotography? If so, and you've done a little bit of research, you may be feeling a little bit overwhelmed. I know, I've, I've been there myself. If you're feeling that way, be sure to stick around. I've got a fantastic tool that's sure to make your entry into this incredible art form painless, cost efficient, and accessible no matter where you're coming from as you watch today. I am a relatively seasoned landscape astrophotographer and as I got deeper and deeper into that form of astro, my, my curiosity quickly blossomed into how do you capture those incredible images of deep space objects? I quickly was overwhelmed by the gear that you can buy, the telescopes, the astro modified cameras. It was just a lot of cost and consideration for a very highly specific type of photography. What I ended up doing was purchasing the Sky Adventure Star Tracker after a ton of YouTube research, which I guess that's why you're here, right? Ultimately what I found was for landscape astro, it was very easy for me to dial it in good enough that I was able to take up to two minute exposures of the Milky Way. But when I wanted to dive deeper, when I wanted to focus on an object, I would put on my telephoto lens on my Sony body, counterbalance the weight, I would polar align, and I thought everything would be dialed in. I would go to take that one minute exposure and lo and behold, trailing. Absolutely the most frustrating process ever. Especially considering that time it would take for me to get everything dialed in. I work a corporate job, so sleep is very, very important to me. Quickly, my attraction and interest in deep space went from, you know, this is gonna be a great resource to this is actually a barrier to me being able to access the images I want to take. Well, recently, I was contacted by an incredible group of guys that have started a program here in the state of Texas. To tell you a little bit about that and how they're making astrophotography accessible to all walks of life all across the globe, we're gonna pack this up and we're headed to Rockwood, Texas. Out in the middle of nowhere, some of the darkest, clearest skies you can find in the state of Texas. This is awesome. Hi, my name is Bray and we are at Starfront Observatories in Rockwood, Texas. And this is a gigantic remote observatory. I think it's technically the largest remote observatory in the world now by quantity of scopes. We've got a little over 250 telescopes in all these buildings back here. And the roofs open up every single night and people will log in and remotely do their astrophotography from this place with nice clear and dark skies instead of the city or wherever they just happen to live. So that's what we're all about and making it more accessible. There's a lot of remote observatories around the world, but they're very expensive. And here we wanted to uh, just make it way more affordable to open it up to the uh, average astrophotographer. So dark sky accessibility is the, uh, the mission out here. So this is the inside of building two. And one thing about our telescopes and how we have them organized is, it's also part of what makes us different from other observatories is we set things up by tier or like a size of how much space they actually take up on the floor. And we organize the buildings and everything else around the space that they take up because we want it to be as efficient as possible with the floor space. Uh, for as many people as possible. We're back so. in the building and we're going to be setting up yeah. the Sea Star S30. Bray is here making sure I don't screw anything up, right? <laughs> but the beautiful thing about this all in one telescope is it's the user interface is super friendly and can be done easily on the cell phone. So we're going to set it up right now. It says connect to the Sea Star universe. Let's do that. And literally, just like that. It pops up, so it says connecting to the Bluetooth of the C-Star. Press the reset button at the bottom of right there. Got it? Connecting to the Wi-Fi, so it sets up its own Wi-Fi network. Wow, congrats, you're connected to your C-Star, just like that. Okay, and so have you seen this? No, I've never looked at this. Yeah, come look at it with me. So, you know, what we can do is open the arm. And so it says 100% battery, so I imagine this has a setup where like if you're camping, you could charge it up, you know, before you go out. Yeah, and you, off the USB-C. 
don't have to be hardwired, right? The beautiful thing about the Seastar S30 is that it's all in one, truly. You've got like a really nice narrow lens here, but it also comes with a nice wide field lens as well. So it gives you a lot of versatility. I actually didn't know it had both. Yes. That's crazy. So if you're out camping, i.e., so Bray's going to be heading to Big Bend National Park next week, you could easily pack this up. And if it were core Milky Way season, you could get your nice wide uh, landscape wide shots with this, with this unit. So aside from that, just kind of looking again at the app, there's different fields you can look at. So what's cool is, again, for beginners who may not be as familiar with what's in the night sky, at a particular time of the year, the app tells you what are the best targets for tonight in your particular location. So awesome. it's calling out Orion, um, M42, M31, Andromeda, the Crab Nebula. And so for instance, if we wanted to photograph the Whirlpool, which is actually on my list, gives you a nice little overview of, you know, what the galaxy is, how it formed, etc. Best visibility window. And then all you have to do is push go gazing and obviously if it were nighttime and it was yeah. within the visibility range the telescope would automatically move and track your subject from there awesome that's super easy right yeah what's Especially. the target for tonight oh okay let's take a look what do you think bray do you think i need to redo my orion i think you gotta do m42 okay so why should I do M42? If you're doing a first line, you have to do M42. It's the rule. Okay, so we're going to follow Bray's rule, and I answered correctly. With We're going to go with M42 tonight, which is the Orion Nebula. That's what we're going to put this sea star to the test in these Bortle 1 skies tonight. It's super cold, and it's getting colder, which in theory should hope, hopefully make for much clearer stars uh, this evening as well. So the sea star, much like any other telescope, we want to make sure that it's completely level. So as you can see, we're on our platform here, but they've got it nice and level for me. And why is it important for a telescope to be level? It's using an alt-as tracking system. So that basically means it goes up, down, side, side. And a lot of the accuracy of where it's going to point depends on it being level with the ground. It's where it thinks it is isn't going to be where it actually is. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, this thing tracks a little bit different than like a Skywatcher Star Adventurer, where the Star Adventurer is using one simple motion to track the sky. But this is using two motions because it has to be following both up and down. So mm -hmm. it'll help with its tracking accuracy, its uh, go-to accuracy, and you'll just have a better time with it being level. <laughs> All right, so we are out in the observatory and I cannot wait to fire up the C-Star S30 for the first time. On the screen, what we're going to do is dial in our first deep space object. The rule is first light has to be M42. So we're going to target on the Orion Nebula. And so here I'll push go stargazing and literally you'll see the arms start to move. It says finding target M42, which is just behind my head here. So it says distance to target less than one degree. It's drilling in on that target. So now it says initialization in process. Oh, look, it's coming in frame. Oh, shit. That's crazy. And it's enhancing as it goes. That is crazy. Now I'm going to stop and see. It's been taking several images for the last minute or so. I mean, for, <laughs> for one button and it's done. And that was a one minute exposure. My gosh, look at that detail. That is crazy. So now we keep stacking, but we're gonna go inside because we're freezing, but. If you're interested in picking up a sea star for yourself, I've got a link below to High Point Scientific. Note it is an affiliate link. It just helps support the channel at no extra cost to you. Furthermore, I am so proud to partner with Starfront because their whole mission is accessibility and ensuring that no matter where you live, you can have access to the night sky. So if you're interested in purchasing a peer with a sea star for yourself, be sure to check out the link below 
Plans for this amazing program start at less than $100 a month. And again, for someone who's looking to just get into astrophotography, what a cost efficient and incredible way to familiarize yourself with the night sky and begin capturing images quickly and at a very affordable rate. If you're interested in sending a scope to the guys at Starfront Observatory, I also have a link below. They are continuing to build out their amazing facilities with more and more buildings. And y'all, the scopes just keep coming in from all over the world. So if you have a scope that's just collecting dust, be sure to pack it up carefully and ship it to them and get back into it. If you're curious about the output, what do the images from the sea star look like? be sure to hit that subscribe button. That is for the next video. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I wish you clear skies and happy shooting. We'll catch you on the next one. Send your scope. <laughs> when it's so cold outside, you have to hide to fly the drone. <laughs> yeah, this is the ride. This is, <laughs> it's my Coleman. B200R mini bike. Uh, the governor has been deleted. I have a torque converter under here and I have a straight pipe exhaust. 46 miles per hour. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna try to take it to Brady one day. That's the, uh, <laughs> that's the dream. I'm Nate, I'm from New York, you know, a little something, something, something county, but what can you say, I'm out here in Texas, it's a, it's a good time. <laughs>